I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Arakwell people of the Bunjalung Nation, and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Are you ready to win at the game of life? Well, throw out that rule book and get down to the business of being the best and most authentic version of you. Welcome to the Human Design Podcast. We're changing the rules around success, abundance, purpose, love, and life, where we're creating a planet where everyone can thrive in a world that loves and supports each other. I'm your host, Emma Dunwoody, a qualified master coach, human design expert, podcaster, and entrepreneur that is living the life of my dreams, breaking all the rules while doing it, making a huge impact, and living my design and manifesting miracles on the daily. Join me as I break down and simplify everything you need to live in alignment with your human design, teach you how to recondition your unconscious mind for greatness, and to take back your power so you can manifest your heaven on earth and serve the rest of the planet at the same time time. It's time to give up the fear and step into your highest potential, to reach for the stars, to know and live your greatness. It's what you deserve and it's what the planet really needs from you. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. This is your monthly reminder to go to the show notes and check out the Body Graph Chart software. I know you've heard us talk about this before, so I'll keep this very short and very sweet. But if you want to know the tool that we've used to bring in over 20,000 new leads and five figures in passive revenue into our business, then go check it out. It's amazing. Stop sending people away to other people's websites to get their human design chart. Instead, use this tool to put it on your own website. You won't regret it. And use the code human design podcast, all lowercase, all together, human design podcast to get 50% off for a year. Hey, hey, and welcome to today's episode. Well, today I want to share with you something that I taught in HDX last week because all of my members were crying out for it. So I'm assuming that you guys will probably be curious about this topic too. So today I'm going to dive into the new paradigm. Now, the reason that this was sparked as a topic in HDX was because I believe late last year there was quite a bit of discussion uh, on another podcast, I'm not sure what podcast that was, about the new paradigm and the um, prophecies that Ra kind of put out into the world when he channeled this information of human design. These prophecies that were very, uh, well, catastrophizing, that the world was going to go to crap and we were all doomed and all of this sort of, you know, apocalyptic view of this transformation that we're going through right now from the old paradigm, which is the cross of planning, to the new paradigm, which is the cross of the sleeping phoenix. So in response, like a good little MG, Um, I want to share with you my experience as a line three and the solutions and the, the, even lead you into a new way, line five, of seeing this chaotic time that we're in right now that Ra really prophesized as being, you know, apocalyptic. And then I really want to take you through to the other side, to this new paradigm Um, and tell you a little bit about that. In HDX, I went super deep. We looked at this incredible um, overarching theme and how we could implement these themes of the gates specifically in our life. Like it was epic. In fact, it's one of the classes um, that I have had in HDX. I mean, I always get a lot of feedback that people love the class, but this is one of the classes that I have got so much feedback on. Um, So that's why I wanted to share with this this with you guys today, because I want to give you some faith that it's all going to be okay, all right, even if we are transitioning through this chaotic time. Now, before I get ahead of myself, there might be many of you that are here listening that are new to human design, and you're like, what is she banging on about? The new paradigm, what? So in human design, like many other modalities and many other spiritual teachers, there is a time coming where the energy that surrounds us is going to shift from one theme 
to the next. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I want to tell that, well, I would say tell a joke, but it's the way I tell it is it's not funny. So it's kind of just this representation, okay? So the story goes that there are these two fish swimming around in a tank. And, you know, one says to the other, oh, how's your day? And the other one says, oh, look, it's been great. I've found some great food. I've been hanging out in my anemone. Like, oh, it's just been a fantastic day. How's your day been? Oh, it's been great. I've just been hanging out with my mates in my school and um, doing the thing. And then this third fish comes over. And the third fish says to the, the first two fish, hey, how's the water? And the first two fish look at each other. And then they look back at the third fish and they're like, what's water? And ultimately, that is a representation of when we talk about the paradigm we're living in or our um, surrounding conditioning energy, it's the soup we're swimming in, the water we're swimming in, the energy that we're swimming in. So at the moment, we are in the time of the cross of planning. And as we uh, come to the end of the cross of planning, the new cross comes in in 2027, um, we have entered a time of chaos. All right. Now, I want to talk about this time of chaos because anyone who knows anything about change knows the change is chaotic. It's messy. It's uncomfortable. So just from that perspective, we're bang on. We're exactly where we need to be, right? But what I want to also share is that Human design isn't the only uh, modality or teaching that's sharing, you know, around 2027, 2026, there's going to be these big shifts. I keep hearing this date, this year, over and over and over again in all sorts of areas of spiritual development, personal development, um, wisdom teachings, you know, big things are happening around this time. Now, Obviously, the human brain, and therefore many humans, are very uncomfortable with change. So what they do is they catastrophize. They uh, let fear lead because the brain is afraid when it doesn't have certainty. It's really, really that simple. So we're in this time of chaos. We have so many people because they don't know, they don't have certainty. They're catastrophizing about all the things that could possibly go wrong. But let me just take you just a little way back in history, not too far at all. First, let's start with the end of the Mayan calendar in 2012. We're all still here. It's okay. Yes, things have fundamentally changed since 2012. In fact, we've had huge growth and transformation, especially in areas like, I don't know, technology and wellness, let's say. However, we all navigated that time. We all made it through. In fact, let's go back just a little bit further. For those of you that may be of my generation, what about Y2K, people? Do you remember that? In 1999, when we flicked over to the year 2000, apparently everything was just going to stop working and the entire world was going to just cease. Yeah, that didn't happen either. So what I want you to do is I want you to take a pause. I want you to step back. I want you to understand that, I mean, we've stepped into the age of Aquarius and yep, things are shifting and changing. However, we're navigating it. We're doing it. Sometimes it's not nice. Sometimes it's not pretty, but we're doing it. And things are getting better. Despite what the mainstream media say, despite what the government says, things are getting better. And the reason why things are getting better is because we're waking up and we're taking back our power. Now, 2027 is just the same, okay? It's going to be bumpy. Um, it's going to be uncomfortable because it's change, not because it's the end of the world. Mother Nature, Gaia, she's got us if we just wake up and understand that we are her. And if we start treating ourselves the way we should be treating the, the planet, then all of a sudden, not only are we going to be treating ourselves better, we're going to be treating other people better and the planet better. This is the journey of discovery that we're on right now. Now, the next part I really think is super important to share with you before I get into the new paradigm is that as
as we navigate and we listen to the things that let's say Ra has shared, it's super important to understand that a channel, any channel is giving you what is coming through them as the conduit. They're giving it to you, to us through the frame of their personality, of their subconscious mind. So every single channel, although they are a conduit for something greater than themselves, they are giving it to you with a flavor of who they are because otherwise they couldn't do it because we have a brain that keeps us anchored into this body and into this 3D reality that has an identity, okay, that has an ego, unless you're the Dalai Lama. And even then the Dalai Lama, everything he channels, is going to have this air of happiness about us, this theme or this essence of happiness about it, okay? So let me give you an example, the perfect example, because we're talking about the new paradigm, and I really want people to stop catastrophizing about it. This is a time of great opportunity. The new paradigm is what starts to birth in 2027, whereas so much of the conversation about the new paradigm is Ra's catastrophizing. And for me, like, This is not serving us because the most powerful thing that we have is our focus. Everything comes after what we focus on, okay? How we feel, therefore our frequency, the language we use, therefore creating our reality. Everything we do is focused, it comes from our focus or everything we create comes from our focus. So what I want you to understand is that every channel has their own essence, their own theme. So let's start with Ra. He is a great man who cha- who channeled some absolutely extraordinary information that all of us sitting right here listening to this podcast on the experiment together, we know how powerful human design is. You know, one of the things that I say to people that are, are like, oh, it's a little bit woo, I'm like, are you kidding me? This information came together in eight days and it mathematically maps together four ancient wisdoms. Do you think a human brain could actually create that in eight days? It's a no. The human brain could not create that on its own, I believe, in hundreds, maybe thousands of years. Uh, Maybe quicker, but anyway, that's not what I'm talking about today. However, so this man was a conduit for incredible information that needed to be birthed at this time. And in my opinion, and it's just my opinion, the universe has picked Ra because he needed to cut through the noise. Okay, human design needed to be birthed. It was new. How were people going to take it seriously? It needed to be birthed and it needed to, you know, land with a thud so that people would pay attention to it. So you choose a manifester with a personality sun in the 51, the gate of shock. You choose this man that is so impactful, that is so like polarizing, like you know, I know for me, like sometimes I want to punch him in the face and the next minute I'm like, oh my God, you're the smartest person alive. So it's this very polarizing, intense energy. And I believe that that was very important for birthing human design and getting it, you know, getting the traction with human design in the beginning. However, one of the things that I want you all to be discerning about is Ra, like the rest of us, always just a human being. And he was imperfect. He was, you know, um, he can make mistakes. And everything that he saw was through the frame of shock, fear, those sort of things, okay? Because when he channeled this information, he was very much in his shadow. Now, as he, you know, the more he did his experiment, yes, I'm positive that his consciousness got higher and higher and higher. However, The core knowledge of information that was channeled was channeled through at a time that he was still fundamentally in his shadow and expressing through fear. So everything that he saw, he saw through the frame of fear and shock. All right. Let me give you another example. Let's take Richard Rudd, for example. He is also a channel. He has created the, you know, also channeled incredible information just as powerful, works so beautifully with human design. However, his human is a poet, you know, a lover, not a fighter, a peace-driven being. 
So the essence that the Gene Keys is birthed into the world with is his essence. Okay. So the reason why I give you this example is because I want you to, you know, listen and be discerning at the same time. Because as long as we're humans and we have a brain, therefore we have a personality, therefore we have an identity of who we think we are, that is going to have an impact on how specifically we deliver the information. I mean, I channel a lot of information. I don't talk about it a lot, but I do. Um, if you've ever been in any of my classes, if you've been in my mastermind, if you've ever been coached by me, um, and if you've been in my world for a while, you'll notice there's almost like a, a switch that flicks and boom, my tone changes um, and the things that come out of my mouth or the, the patterns that are um, noticed or whatever it is, it's very, it's a different energy. It's very powerful. And that is definitely channeling through me. However, there is the essence of Emma, of who I am. It's going to come from this place of of tenderness. It's going to come from this place of, of strength. It's going to come from this place of humor because that's, you know, um, the the um, vehicle in which it's coming through, okay? So the next step is the new paradigm. So the new paradigm, we are shifting from the cross of planning, which is the gate 37, the gate 40, the 9, and the 16, okay? So this last 400 years, we have been, what have we been doing? Developing skills, the 16, Um Learning, what, learning the important things to focus on, not getting stuck in um, the unimportant little things, the nine. Um, then we've been learning about family, like what is the family, you know, man, woman, nuclear family. And we've also been learning about um, our energy, uh, providing, working, how our energy works. Now, that evolved us to a certain point that was brilliant. But then we started burning out. Then we noticed the imbalance between the masculine and the feminine. Then we noticed that we were afraid of standing out and being different. Then we noticed that we just got stuck doing these repetitive Groundhog Day things because we're conditioned to do them. So the shadows of these gates are starting to show themselves very significantly in this time of transformation. Because it's taken us so far, but we've outgrown this version of the human race. It's time to grow into a new one. So we're going through this transitional stage right now. And that's okay. As I said, change is challenging. It's uncomfortable. It's messy. But if we see it as an adventure, as an opportunity to take back our power, to actually create a world that we want as opposed to the world we've been told we want, okay, and then we're moving into the new paradigm, which is the 55, the 59, the 34, and the 20, the uh, cross of the sleeping phoenix. And it is not lost on me that we are literally moving into a time where the overarching theme of this cross is to help people rise from the ashes. Like seriously, that is not lost on me. I think that is so beautifully powerful. And as I live with a cross of the sleeping phoenix, as I have one, I've got one um, on my team, I've got a lot of sleeping phoenixes around me. These humans are epic. They are so powerful at listening, holding space, understanding people's trauma, challenge, all of those things, and then helping them, you know, whether it's taking them by the hand, telling them the hard truths, um, nurturing them, whatever it is, they are like superheroes who rise these people from the ashes, help people rise from the ashes. And this is the time that we're going into, okay? Um, so this is going to be a time, it's very individualistic. We're moving from sort of more tribal collective time. We're moving to a predominantly individualistic time. Um, and what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean we need to be selfish. It means to, that we need to know who we are. It's why I constantly bang on about purpose because we need to understand our purpose, why we're here. It's a time of self-empowerment. It's counterintuitive because we've been told that we have to think of others first, but this new time we're going into, we're starting to wake up and realize we have to think about ourselves first because when we think about ourselves first, then we realize that we are all one. We are all connected. And all we want to do, because we want to love and nurture ourselves, 
As within, so without. We can only love and nurture others, okay? So as long as we think we're not good enough or we're only good enough when we give to others, that's the world that we create. But when we start to understand that we are Mother Earth, we are the divine, we you know deserve to live the life of our dreams, then all of a sudden we want to give that to everybody else. And this is the time that we're moving into. Um, this is a time where we actually get to live with much greater freedom. So let's talk about that. So the whole new paradigm kicks off with the 55. And from the Gene Keys perspective, this is the gift and Cidic state of freedom. Okay, so it's going to be a time of freedom. Um, you know, I often think about the 55 because it's the gate of abundance. It's like the the abundance of spirit, okay? And I often use the metaphor of a spirited horse or a spirited child. You know, when they are so embodied in their authentic self that they are completely oblivious to the world around them. They are in joy and expression and playfulness and all the things. This is the time that we're moving into. However, there is the shadow of victim victimization or the being the victim. And what are we moving out of? Being the victim. We're waking up and realizing that we need to take responsibility because we're responsible for the life that we're creating, for the planet that we live on, for the bodies that we live in, for each other. We realize now that we have the power. Okay, so of course, we're seeing a lot of victimization in the world because we're in this transitional time. People don't know where to go. Our default setting is fear. We are taught through the media, through governments, through society to focus on fear. So we're experiencing victimization. But you know better. So think more and focus more on freedom. What does freedom of spirit mean to you? Then we go into the, the 59, and the 59 is the gate of intimacy. One of the things that really, the time that I've really studied the 59, or the first time I should say I really studied the 59, the thing that kept coming out over and over and over up for me was trust, 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 trust. This is all about trusting the people around you, the intimate connections, the intimate connection with self and therefore others. This is also an energy of, there's a lot of sexual sexual energy here. And one of the things that Ra did say is that our sexual energy is going to change into the new paradigm. And well, we're seeing it already. We are absolutely seeing how man, woman, marriage is completely falling apart. And there is so many different options, different boxes to tick, you know, all of the things. And that's a good thing. And I fundamentally believe that we are moving toward a time where we will all, and maybe not my generation, however, I do believe that there's going to be a time in the not too distant future where, you know, love and intimacy will be all about the other person. Like, I love this person. Uh, because we're moving out of a paradigm that's been all about procreation, about evolving the human race, having babies, whereas now we're moving into an individualistic time. So it's not about growing the human race because that's what, you know, the the elites would want us to do because the more people they have to work for them, you know, and I know that sounds conspiracy and all that stuff, but actually it, it's the way it works um, or the way it is right now. In the new paradigm, we are working from a more individualistic state. So what fills my heart up? How do I want to serve? What do I want to give to the planet? What am I good at? How, you know, how does my purpose fit in? And when we come from this place, we, we have abundant 55 resources. But it's also going into this time where we can love whoever we want to love and in whatever way we want to love them because <clears throat> we don't have this procreation theme that's constantly kind of tapping us on the shoulders. Again, we're seeing these changes already play out, you know, less women wanting to have children, um, you know, and the diversity within intimacy and relationships. Then we talk about the, the 34. So the 34 is all about empowerment. And actually at its Cidic state in the Gene Keys, this is majesty. It's the superhero. I mean, why do you think we have all these superhero movies right now? Because it's the new freaking paradigm that we're moving into. We all have these superpowers that lie within us. We all have this 
yeah, power. And we're being woken up to that right now because we're all being asked. And if you're not asking yourself this, I encourage you to do it. What does power mean to us? And I know for me, power is all about self-empowerment. It's about sovereignty. It's about freedom. That's what power means to me. And that's what power is going to be more like as we move into this new paradigm. So the 34 is all about us finding the superhero that lives within us and expressing that, having the courage to express it and give it to the world. And then, of course, the 20. Well, the 20 is all about wisdom, presence, connection through the gap. And for me, I feel like this is like the raising of consciousness because that's where we're at. We have to raise our consciousness. Like that is the thing that the human race is at. If we want to, you know, we, we, there's so many people out there talking about save the planet, right? There's so much more just around the corner than, than saving the planet. The planet is very important and we must save her. We must do everything we can to treat her with love and respect and compassion and to feed her everything that she needs. And, you know, I'm a massive supporter of planet Earth. I mean, we are we are Gaia, right? But in the not too distant future, we are going to start to see a planet, a world, a human race that we never expected that's beyond our wildest dreams. And the only way that we can really step into our potential as a planet is to raise our consciousness and that's what the 20 is all about it's about raising our consciousness moving away from fear you know if there's one thing i hear because i am as you all know an absolute gaia addict i'm constantly watching all the shows i'm reading all the things i'm listening to all the podcasts and the thing that i hear over and over and over again is we must move away from fear we must let go of fear we must move into faith and trust um, and that is raising our consciousness. It's that simple. So that's kind of an overview of where we're moving to. <clears throat> In HDX, I dived even deeper. Um, I'm not going to, I don't have time to do that here. You can obviously come and check out HDX if you want to join in um, for all the classes and see the full class. Having said all of that today, I encourage you to be really aware of how powerful you really are. That what you choose to focus on, fear or love, is really creating our new paradigm. And what do you want that new paradigm to look like, feel like, sound like, smell like? Because those things matter. You matter. Every single human that focuses on the beauty, the freedom, the power, the consciousness, the love, connection, oneness of this new paradigm, the faster we're going to get there. The faster more of the human race is going to take back their power and wake up. And the more of us that will lead through raising our own consciousness, through example, maybe just through our energy. So please don't invest your energy in catastrophizing because we are already there. We are in the time that Ra predicted. It's happening. And it's your choice to how specifically you navigate through that. Now, that's not to say you ignore the atrocities because they're happening and they're not okay. And the question I have for you is how can you influence a better world? How can you make choices that raise us up, not cut us down? How can you serve with your superpowers those that are in need. It's not about fighting through fear. It's about leading with grace and love and impact. Let's do it. Let's buckle up. Let's get into this new paradigm. The next few years from all of the channels and spiritual leaders and prophesizers that I've listened to, they're going to be 
transformational. We are in a significant time of change. And we either choose to get on the love bus, we choose to be seen, to be heard, to be authentically ourselves, courageously and confidently show up as ourselves, even though we're going to fuck it up sometimes, we're going to be wrong sometimes, we're going to trip over sometimes, but that doesn't matter. More and more, we have to understand that our frequency is everything. So if you set out with good intention, if you set out with an open heart, if you set out with love in your heart and a vision for a greater future, then you will be supported even in the moments that you fall down because you're going to fall down. Take it from me. So that's enough for me today. I trust you got what you needed. I trust that you feel better about the new paradigm. And I hope that you're actually a little bit fired up, a little bit excited about the potential of who you're going to become and who planet Earth and the human race is going to become over the next number of decades and into this new paradigm. Have a great day. I look forward to having you on the next podcast. Bye for now. Thanks everyone for being here all the way to the end of the podcast. I hope you got lots of value out of it. I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. Could I please ask that you share this podcast with friends if you found it valuable? And also, bonus points, could you leave a review for me as well on Apple? It would be greatly appreciated. If at any point you would like to be on the podcast or you've got questions that you'd like me to discuss on the podcast, by all means, get on my socials and DM me. Everything you need is there in the show notes. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.